Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCSE Higher Revision video. Today we're going to be looking at speed, distance and time. So we're going to be looking at how to solve questions involving speed, distance and time. We'll also be looking at some questions involving travel graphs and things like that. So today we're going to be looking at speed, distance and time. There'll be some questions that I go through and then there'll also be some for you to try yourself. And remember actually in this video you can pause at any time and try any of the questions yourself. So let's get started. Hi, today we're going to be looking at speed, distance and time. Now if we've got a speed such as 30 miles per hour, it tells us a lot of information. It says 30 miles per hour. It's saying that every single hour something is travelling 30 miles. So in one hour it would travel 30 miles. In two hours it would travel 60 miles. In three hours it would travel 90 miles and so on. And we've got some formulae with speed, distance and time. We've got the speed is equal to distance divided by time. So for instance, if I travelled 90 miles in 3 hours, 90 divided by 3 is equal to 30. So my speed would be 30 miles per hour. If, for instance, I was travelling 30 miles per hour and I travelled for 2 hours, well that would be 2 lots of 30 miles, because every hour it's 30 miles, 30 times 2 is equal to 60, so I would travel 60 miles. And finally, if I travelled a distance such as 150 miles at a speed of 30 miles per hour, if I divide that distance by the speed, it'll tell me how long the journey took, which would be 5 hours. So speed is equal to distance divided by time. Distance is equal to speed times time, and time is equal to distance divided by speed. And it's really important that you remember those. So if you've got your window pens, feel free to jot those on your window so that you can remember those. So if you're daydreaming, look out your window, you can see speed is distance divided by time. Distance is equal to speed times time, and time is equal to distance divided by speed. Okay, let's have a look at our first question. So our first question says, a car drives 180 miles in four hours. Calculate the average speed in miles per hour of the car. So feel free to press pause now to work out this question. Okay, so speed is equal to distance divided by time. So the car travels 180 miles, so that's going to be 180. And the time's 4 hours, so divided by 4. And 180 divided by 4 is equal to 45. So the speed of the car, the average speed of the car, is 45 miles per hour. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, our next question says, Kevin runs 300 meters in 50 seconds. Work out his average speed. So feel free to press pause now to work this out. Okay, so we want to find the speed, so speed is equal to distance divided by time. So we want to take the distance, which is 300 meters, and divide it by the time, which is 50 seconds. So the speed is equal to distance, which is 300 meters, divided by the time, which is 50 seconds. And 300 divided by 50 is equal to 6. So it's going to be 6, and then we've got meters per second. So meters per second, and that little slash means per. So it's 6 meters per second, and that's Kevin's average speed. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question says, a train travels 135 miles at an average speed of 45 miles per hour. Work out how long the journey lasts. So feel free to press pause now to work this out. Okay, so we want to work out how long the journey lasts. That's time. So time is equal to distance divided by speed. Or another way to think of it is we want to find out how long it takes. It's traveling at 45 miles per hour. So we just need to see how many 45s go into 135. And that'll tell us how long it takes. So time is equal to distance divided by speed. So the distance divided by the speed. So we're going to do the time taken is equal to the distance, 135 miles, divided by the speed, which is 45. And 135 divided by 45 is equal to 3. So the journey would last three hours and that's it and if you got that well done okay let's have a look at our next question okay let's have a look at our next question so our next question says a bird flies for five hours at an average speed of 19 kilometers per hour calculate how far the bird flies so feel free to press pause now and work out how far the bird flies okay so the bird flies a speed of 19 kilometers per hour so 19 kilometers every hour and it travels for five hours so it's going to be five lots of 19 so the distance is equal to the speed multiplied by the time so if we do the speed which is equal to 19 multiplied by the time which is five hours that'll tell us how far the bird flew so 19 multiplied by 5 is equal to 95 and remember we're dealing with kilometers here so kilometers so 95 kilometers so the bird flew 95 kilometers and if you got that well done okay let's have a look at our next question okay so this time we've got a helicopter flies 120 miles in one hour 30 minutes calculate the average speed in miles per hour of the helicopter so feel free to press pause now and to work this out Okay, so we want to find the speed of the helicopter. So remember, the speed is equal to distance divided by time. So the distance, it flew 120 miles, so 120, divided by the time. Now here the time is 1 hour and 30 minutes. Now 30 minutes is half an hour, so it's going to be 1.5 hours, so 1.5. So we're going to do 120 divided by 1.5. So 120 divided by 1.5 is equal to 80. So that's 80 miles per hour, 80 miles per hour. So that's the average speed of the helicopter. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write some overtimes here and I'm going to change them into hours just so we've got a bit of practice in terms of doing that. 
Okay, so I've written down some times here. Now, this question was quite nice because it's one hour, 30 minutes. So we just knew that was a one and a half hour, so 1.5 hours. So I've written down some times here. Three hours, 15 minutes. Six hours, 45 minutes. Two hours, 20 minutes. 36 minutes. One hour, 48 minutes. And nine hours and six minutes. And see if you can change those into hours now. So press pause and change or convert all of these just into hours. Okay, so three hours, 15 minutes, so that'll be 3.25 hours, so 3.25 hours. And the reason is, 15 minutes is a quarter of an hour, so that's going to be 0.25. So we've got three hours and 15 minutes, so it's going to be 3.25 hours, and that's it. Okay, next, we've got six hours and 45 minutes, so six hours, so that's six. And then 45 minutes, so that's three quarters of an hour, and three quarters is a decimal, will be 0.75. So it's going to be 6.75 hours. Okay, next one, two hours and 20 minutes. Well, two hours, that's going to be two, and then we've got point. Now, 20 minutes, I'm just going to go up here, 20 minutes, 20 out of 60. If we cancel down that fraction, that's going to be two sixths, and divide it by two again, that's going to be one third. So it's a third of an hour. So 20 minutes is a third of an hour. And a third is a decimal number, is 0 0.3333333 and so on. So it'll be 2.3333 and so on hours. You could put the little dot above it and write 2.3 with the dot above it hours. And that would mean 2.3 reoccurring hours. And that's it. So two hours and 20 minutes would be 2.3333 and so on hours. So it can be useful to know that 20 minutes is a third of an hour. And similarly, 40 minutes would be two thirds of an hour. So if you ever had 40 minutes, that's 0 0.66666 and so on. Okay, next, 36 minutes. So again, Again, we could write this as a fraction and cancel it down. Alternatively, you could get your calculator and just take your 36 and divide it by 60. And 36 divided by 60 is 0 0.6. So it's 0 0.6 hours, just dividing that by 60. So 0 0.6 hours. One hour, 48 minutes. So one hour would be one point. And then 48 minutes, divide the 48 by 60. So 48 divided by 60 is equal to 0 0.8. So it's going to be 1.8 hours altogether. And then finally, 9 hours and 6 minutes, that's going to be 9 point. And 6 divided by 60 is equal to 0 0.1, so that'll be 9.1 hours. And that's it. So if you got those, well done. So, so it can be quite useful to convert those hours and minutes into just hours. So if you're doing questions like this, you can convert those minutes and hours into hours. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So the next question says, Roger drives for 2 hours and 45 minutes at an average speed of 48 miles per hour. How far does Roger drive? So feel free to press pause now to work this out. So we want to find out how far Roger drives. So he drives at an average speed of 48 miles per hour. So that means on average he drives 48 miles every hour. And he drives for 2 hours and 45 minutes. So to find how far he drives, we just need to find the distance. So distance is equal to speed multiplied by time. We just need to multiply 48 by how long he drives for in hours. So we're going to do the speed, which is 48 multiply by the time. Now we want it to be an hour, so it's two hours and 45 minutes. So at 45 minutes is three quarters of an hour. And remember, three quarters is 0.75, so that'll be 2.75 hours. So two hours and 45 minutes would be 2.75 hours. So we're going to do 48 multiplied by 2.75. And when we do 48 multiplied by 2.75, that's equal to 132 miles. And that's it. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at another question. Okay, let's have a look at another question. So this time we're told that a lorry drives 240 miles at an average speed of 50 miles per hour. How long does the journey last? Give your answer in hours and minutes. So we want to find out how long this journey lasts and we're to give our answer in hours and minutes. So feel free to press pause now to work this out. Okay, so because we were trying to find out how long the journey lasts, that's time. So the time is equal to the distance divided by the speed. We want to see how many lots of 50 go into 240 because that'll tell us how long it will take. So we're going to do 240, the distance, divided by the speed, which is 50. And if we do 240 divided by 50, that's equal to 4.8, so 4.8 hours. So the question says, how long does the journey last? Well, it lasts 4.8 hours, but we've got to give our answer in hours and minutes. So we want to have so many hours and so many minutes. Now, in terms of this, we've got 4.8 hours, but we know it's going to be four hours, so four hours. So we just need to figure out how many minutes. So if we want to change this 0 0.8 hours into minutes, we take the 0 0.8 and we multiply by 60. And 0 0.8 multiplied by 60 is equal to 48. So it's four hours and 48 minutes. So four hours and 48 minutes. So all we've done was we just done four hours. And then we took the 0 0.8, multiply that by 60 and got 48. And that's equal to four hours and 48 minutes. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question says, Miss Black completes a journey in three stages. So she does stage one, she drives 40 kilometers an hour for 45 minutes. Stage two, she drives 60 kilometers an hour for two hours and nine minutes. And then altogether over all three stages, Miss Black drives 171.6 kilometers in three hours and 15 minutes. And the question says, what was her average speed in kilometers per hour in stage three? So feel free to press pause now to try this question. 
Okay, so in terms of this question, we want to find the speed for stage three. So remember speed is equal to, speed is equal to distance divided by time. So if we take the distance and divide it by the time, we'll find the speed. Now we know the duration of stage one, or we know the duration of stage two, and we've got the duration of the entire journey. So we can work out the time for stage three, how long it took. So let's do that. So if stage one lasts 45 minutes and stage two lasts two hours and nine minutes, if we add them together, we add 45 minutes onto this, we'll find the duration of stage one and stage two. Now 45 plus 9 is equal to 54, so that would be equal to 2 hours and 54 minutes. 2 hours and 54 minutes, 54 minutes. Now we know the whole journey took 3 hours and 15 minutes, so we just need to work out the difference, and that'll be how long stage 3 lasts. So another 6 minutes would bring us to 3 hours, and then we'll go 15, so that'll be 21 minutes, so 21 minutes. So stage 3 took 21 minutes. So we know the time taken for stage three, now we need to work out the distance. Now if we have a look at this, we've got the speed of stage one, the speed of stage two, and the duration for both of them, and we know the distance for the whole thing. So if we work out the distance traveled in stage one, if we work out the distance traveled in stage two, and then we add them together and take them away from the total distance, we can work out the distance covered in stage three. So let's do that. So stage one, stage one, distance is equal to speed times time, so the speed is equal to 40 kilometers an hour, so 40, multiplied by the time. The time here is 45 minutes. 45 minutes is three quarters of an hour, so we're going to multiply by 0.75. And if we do 40, multiply by 0.75, that's equal to 30, so that's 30 kilometers. So that means the length of stage one is 30 kilometers. In terms of stage two, stage two, well, again, distance is equal to speed times time. The speed is equal to 60 kilometers an hour. Now the time is two hours and nine minutes. I want to change this nine minutes into a decimal. Now it's going to be two point something. So I'm going to take the nine minutes, I'm going to divide it by 60 on my calculator, and nine divided by 60 is equal to 0 0.15. So that means it's going to be 2.15 hours. So that's how I've changed the nine minutes into that 0 0.15 to give me 2.15 hours. So this is 2.15 hours. I'm going to multiply by 60, so multiply it by 60 is equal to 129 kilometers. So we know the length of stage one and we know the length of stage two. If we get add them together, that's gonna to be 159 kilometers. So for stage one and stage two, the total length of those two stages will be 159 kilometers. Now we're told the total distance for all three stages. So in other words, how far Miss Black drove in total. So if we take the 171.6 and take away the 159, that's equal to 12.6 kilometers. So that means in stage three, Miss Black drove 12.6 kilometers in 21 minutes. So let's write that down. Let's write down stage three. We've got that the distance is equal to 12.6 kilometers. And then the time is 21 minutes. So the time is 21 minutes. So 21 minutes. I'm actually just going to convert that into hours. So I'm going to take the 21 minutes and divide it by 60. And that's equal to 0.35. So the time is equal to 0.35 hours. Just converting those minutes into hours. And now if we want to find the speed in kilometers per hour, we can now just do distance divided by time. So the speed is equal to distance divided by time. So that's going to be equal to 12.6, so 12.6 divided by 0 0.35, and that's equal to 36. So that's 36 kilometers per hour. That's our speed in stage three. And if you got that, well done, 36 kilometers per hour. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at speed, distance, and time. We've looked at the fact that speed is equal to distance divided by time. The time is equal to distance divided by speed and the distance is equal to speed times time. We've also looked at some questions that involve those, so hopefully you'll be able to answer those questions. Also remember with speed distance time, things such as the fact that, you know, three quarters of an hour. So for instance, if it was one and three quarters of an hour, you'd use 1.75, so how to change those minutes into hours. Um, also having a look at the fact that, you know, how to change from perhaps, you know, meters per second to kilometers per hour and be able to answer questions like that. So it's important to know how to approach speed distance and time questions and also the fact that they can be used in other topics so there might be standard form and speed distance and time as well so making sure that you can sort of uh, you know be confident dealing with speed in other contexts as well in this video we've looked at speed distance and time there's 15 days to go to gcc maths exam so keep up the hard work and i'll see you tomorrow for 14 days or two weeks to go tomorrow to gcc maths exam cheers bye